Hey, what's up, guys? I'm over here. Welcome back to another episode of my F1 2019 manager career mode here with Red Bull for Anima 9 today at the Italian Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check the one out before you see this one because, well, now things are looking a bit more pressurized lately. As of late, the last few episodes, we've been looking less and less comfortable in the races. Now, Hamilton is only uh, two points behind Verstappen, the championship, uh, and then and Verstappen himself is only, you know, uh, 16 points behind Verlaine, which is... Still a lot of points, but uh, the way Hamilton swung back in this championship is quite big. You know, Merck weren't there. You know, they were down in fourth, fifth place at one point. Really not doing too well in the first three rounds, four rounds. And now they're second place. They've beaten Ferrari and Hamilton's there in P3. Despite only having one win, apparently. Which I, I don't believe. I don't actually get how they've only had one win. And they're right up there in P, uh, P2. It just shows you how consistent they've been uh, lately uh, as of late. Because we've had four wins. Ferrari had three. Merck won. And they're ahead in second place there. And they're only 50 points off. So um, they've done quite well for sure. Um, so we're going to have to watch out for that. And kind of just watch our backs a little bit. And also need to maybe work with the car some more somehow. I don't know how, honestly. Because we're first place in everything. So I don't actually know what we need to improve necessarily. The engine maybe looks like, actually, you know what? The engine, for the first time now, Ferrari are top in the engine department. So maybe actually now that's a sign we need to build a new engine, which is going to be frustrating because that'll take a little bit longer now, actually. I wish I kind of uh, knew that uh, a lot earlier. So in terms of an engine we need to build, um, well, I don't really know what to go for because we don't actually have that many great design options for an engine here, to be honest. A lot of them have risk levels to add in. So, that's very frustrating. Um, we've got, well, plus 20, but with a risk level. Uh, minus 10 red zone, the fuel efficiency improved. None of that seems too appealing. Uh, again, here, there's no qualifying, so the best option's here. If we don't want to go for a risk level. And then here, uh, the best option's this, I guess. But that's a minus 10 reliability during the race. Plus 40, I guess. That gives us an instant boost. Of 1534, um, which I don't even know what is what our current car is. I need to kind of look through. Uh, we need to make sure the car's repaired. Uh, Ferrari had a bit of a disaster. Um, their team looks weak. I'm going to say that. Their marketability has gone down because of that. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to move forward then by one day just so I can see the car repairs done. Because I need to quickly check the engine. So 1534, wasn't it? That's instantly better than what we've got right now. But, uh, and, and we're near completion. Oh, okay, right. So, 153 is better than what we've got right now. The maximum is also better. 1549. But none of this, you know, if I do that, that's got a risk level. Fuel, fuel efficiency is improved if I do that, which might be good. Because then we can push the engine harder in the race, potentially. And then my epics are pretty horrendous as well. What is this? Ian Brown is horrendous on the engine. None of these are very good stats. Um, yeah, not impressed. Not impressed. None of these are very good. So we're going to have to go for this maybe. 12 days uh, after the race will be built. I don't know. Yeah, let's go for it. 2.2 million. I don't know if it's the right call, but we'll go for it. We have to do some sort of engine improvement. May as well. Even if it's a tiny engine improvement. Got to try it. Because uh, we're on the back foot as of late. Uh, HQ is going to get done in four weeks' time. Don't know if that's going to be before the Italian Grand Prix or not. Reformance work is done to our car, apparently. So we've really maxed out a lot of these things. Right, add those on. Add the front wing on. Let's just max out everything we can afford to max out, pretty much. Uh, gearbox. Uh, that's maxed out already. That will be maxed out. Uh, rear wings and suspensions maxed out already. So... We're looking pretty good in terms of maxing parts out. So uh, there's not actually a lot we can actually do apart from just hopefully have a better race in Milan. Ho you know, Ferrari have the best engine now, so they could go well at the home GP. We're still better than Mercedes, though, in the engine department. So hopefully we can, ha we can beat Hamilton. Okay, we can beat our. And so that way, it should be an okay Grand Prix. Uh, report on Milan is going to be a 40% chance of rain. So... There's maybe a good chance of it. Uh, GMA vote coming up for the tyres. Won't worry about that for now. But 3M is our sponsor now. 900k. It's going to be raining and raining apparently. So there you go. The 40% chance of rain might come in. Uh, low tyre wear of course. So we're going to take in a lot of soft tyres. Uh, although the fuel will see determine a lot of these things. So I'll take in three sets of hards just in case. But I think the fuel will be an overriding factor. Uh, the fit parts were looking pretty fine last time. So that's all good. And Verline now is no longer injured. 
injured. So that's very good to see. He's fully fit again. Um, so hopefully we've got a you know, strong duo coming to this Grand Prix. All right, taking practice is raining straight away. So we're going to send them out on Inters. Uh, it'll be raining for about, well, most of the session, actually. So this might be a very pointless session in terms of if it's uh, not going to be raining too much. You know, 40% chance of rain So uh, for, the, for the race. So, you know, if it doesn't rain, I think a lot of us will be in a bit, a bit of a pickle in terms of knowledge. But obviously, if everyone's in the same boat, then that's all fine. Uh, but let's just make sure we nail this setup and also and also get knowledge on Inters because you n never know, it could be useful. Uh, but first of all, uh, we'll check the setups. Uh, compared to last, I'm using last year's setups, but straight away, the opinion on the setups was I had to lower the downforce compared to last year. So that's probably a good thing, a good sign that our car has more downforce than last year's car, perhaps. Uh, and so maybe the drag was going to be too much there, but we'll see. We're at 90% right now. Not great that I see again, I have to go low on the downforce, just very much compared to last year we've got way way more downforce than last year's setup handling wise we're looking okay so let's just go back a little bit towards oversteer speed bounce was fine i don't really know where to go gonna try top end speed there with verline uh, with uh, verstappen but verline wanted to go real low on the speed bounce and so he should because he's on two excellence and a great so maybe verline now he's fully fit now and he's back to good form maybe 97 percent you can just go out there, eight laps and inters and get the knowledge. So maybe, maybe that was just it. You know, last episode, Verlaine wasn't too quick because of his injury. Now that he's fully fit again, maybe our, our worries will be gone. Maybe he'll just be dominating this GP and we don't, won't need to worry about Lewis Hamilton or Hour. We'll see. But uh, Verstappen will bring him back in now to check this up. But uh, Verlaine could just go on there and get the tyre knowledge. But Verstappen, mate, what are you saying? Two greats and a good. So we're kind of semi okay then we kind of had one step forward one step back in a way um so let's revert back to where we were with the speed balance go the other way really and then downforce i don't know just even even lower even lower than what we've got now might be the excellent and then handling was the same so we've not really changed that too much let's go even more to oversteer and let's quickly check right okay the speed balance is still fine right uh let's try this out again with verstappen and see how that goes uh, for now, it's a 1-2 for Merck. Verlaine pops in a time. That's P3. Rossi's up there as well. Not going to read too much into those times, though. Never do in practice. But Merck certainly are looking much better these days compared to those first three, four races where they were having DNFs. They were crashing together and all this malarkey. Um, it's, it's, it's looking a lot better these days for the Silver Arrows. But we come in then. Two greats and a good. So again, one step forward, two steps back. 93% downfall uh set up there so bring the downfalls back up to what we had uh and then bring it even more maybe so something like that might be the excellent i don't know this is very fine very fine margins here we're working we're working with handling okay i've gone even more that way and then speed balance is fine so let, yeah let's just keep it like that uh i'm gonna go a laps now inters and just keep him out there just want to get this knowledge done on uh, level three on the inters before we get to the dry period. Then I'll sort out Verstappen set up if need be. Uh, we've already got a few people already on, on hards. Uh, they've gone a little bit too early, I would say. I would say, chaps. Three people on the hard tyres there at the bottom of the, of the grid. No, they've seen their senses and they come back onto inters. For some reason, they just decided to just randomly come in. Right. I'll bring both drivers in. Uh, won't need to send Verline out again. We'll need to send Verstappen out again just to check the setup, maybe. Or oh, not. So excellent and a great there. So I think both our drivers are looking very good now. Uh, 98%. Yeah, we're fine now. We'll just chill out then until the rain subsides. And then send them out on the dry tyres. Which will be very, very soon. As we go through one more lapse phase of wet. And then I think I'll send them out now, to be honest. On a set of, well, probably soft tyres. Because with the refueling, I think softs will be the way to go here. Especially with the low tyre wear. Um, yeah, onto soft tyres. All right, on to the race then. Uh, we are, well, I don't know where we are. I'm trying to tell from here. It doesn't look like we're at the front, unless I'm mistaken. P14 and 15, yes, not at the front. But at least our two drivers together. So that's a very equal grid allocation then for the random grid slot. It is raining at the start here. It'll get dry though by lap, well, I'm going to say 15 and then drive to the end it looks like. So going to take in the soft tyres. We'll be on them for the longest. I uh, also need to choose the race trim. Don't know why I did not choose that for Verstappen. Uh, set up with goods. Um, let me just double check these tyres then. 28 laps. So from lap 14, we've got 48 laps left. 
So there'll be four, there'll be 34 laps left. So that's an easy one stop then on these soft tyres, pushing them quite a lot in the race then. 20 laps of fuel, which works out. So 20, 20 a piece. So um, what did I say there? How many laps are left? Did I say 44 minus 4, 44, 34? So maybe like, I don't know, like seven, 18 laps of fuel needed for each stint. So yeah, we're looking fine. Pretty much perfect for the fuel tank and the tyres. Strategy we attack though at the very start here. And uh, hopefully our car's pretty good in the wet still without the knowledge there. Uh, but it just makes sense, you know, seeing as we're probably going to be longer longer on the soft tyres, not to, not to choose... Uh, not choose the inter knowledge and choose the soft tire knowledge instead. Um, so from 14th and 15th, that's not great. Let me see what. Oh my, really, really, Mercedes, Hamilton's P2. Just hand them the win. Just hand him the win. Right, Hamilton's second place. That's going to make our life a lot harder. Uh, Rossi's P7, ours P8. Where on earth is De Costa? I think he's behind us, I think it looks like. Yeah, De Costa's 20, uh, 21st. Right, uh, that's going to make life a lot harder now to try and do something in this race. Let's hope our engine power can power us through in the first few laps and we can get straight up into P2 and 3, respectively, and chase after Hamilton, who inevitably probably will get into first place by the time we get to the end of lap 1. But let's go then to five red lights to the Italian Grand Prix from P14 and 15 on the grid. Fire lights are out and we're on the way. It's an okay start for Verstappen there. Uh, kind of mediocre one for Verlon. Actually, pretty piss poor one for Verlon. As we go through then, let's just fast forward this and see how this goes. Verstappen makes his way up to P6, that is. That's good, P5 now. Verlon's down here in traffic in P13, making his way through. You can see how many cars he's got to pass now on the exit. It just looks like a swarm of bees. Here it is. But Verstappen now makes a move, double move on the racing point cars. The Audi comes out of nowhere, that is, on the right-hand side to make a triple three-wide move there. That's of, uh, of Hyman. And uh, she's up into uh, second place. Uh, Verstappen is down to P5 now. So we're jostling for position. What did I say? Hamilton up into P1. No surprise. Let's use some ERS on the exit, though, and try and get past all these guys. Verstappen up into P2 now and chasing after Lewis Hamilton. Verline P5. We're using a lot of ERS down this straight to get up into P3. There we go. On auto. Use the ERS to good use. And we're up into P... Ooh, up into P1. What on earth happened? What? What? Okay, v uh, Verstappen, I don't know, I, I was too focused on Verlan, I did not think you were going to do that. Uh, on his own accord on auto, it looked like Verstappen used way more of his ERS than I wanted him to. And he's up into first place now, control the race maybe. Verline P3, uh, he's closed up and got away from P4, it's all looking very nice now. A top three fight now, out and out, between Verstappen, Hamilton and Verline. Maybe we're closing up on Hamilton as well, look at that slipstream working, the engine power. Porsche v Mercedes. Looks like it's working well. Verline is closing up. So let's see how this goes then as we're pushing the tyres flat out. I uh, probably need to start conserving them a little bit, to be honest. We'll do that once I overtake Hamilton, I think. Let's just see how this goes. Yeah, we've overtaken him. Come on down the inside. We'll go conserve now. We'll try and bring these tyres back into check. We'll keep on overtake mode. But, uh, obviously, surprise, surprise. Uh, Hamilton pushes past us with his ERS use, but and Alta gets past uh, Verstappen now because he uses so much ERS. He's now stopped using it with side by side. Verstappen is going to get past, but we're on conserve right now. Hamilton's attacking. That's fine. He's going to have to conserve at some point, and that's when we'll push again. So it's fine. We'll calm things down. You can see there, Hamilton's now in backup mode. We're on conserve. We're all trying to bring these tire temps down. And the water is kind of slightly half and half damp. It's fine. You can see we're closing back up 0 0.4 the gap there with Verstappen. So, you know, you're seeing this ebb and flow of the Grand Prix of people pushing and, you know, conserving, pushing, conserving. For now, we've gone early on the conserve. And uh, soon enough, we should be able to push again. Right, going to go flat out attack now. Probably all the way till our stint now because the gap is 3.4. So we lost a lot of time there. But we're going to bring this back in. Uh, Hamilton used some ERS though because it was 3.3 now it's up to 3.8 so he's using ERS quite well and he's got a decent gap here unfortunately because well I had to conserve so much to make sure we could actually push now to the end of this stint really but let's see how this goes now tyres overheated I know just keep pushing the staff and keep getting that time 2.6 2.2 looking good two seconds now we're under on the two seconds this is looking much better Hamilton now pit early uh, that's a little bit early than I think we should pit uh, now let's pit in onto soft tyres. Fuel options, fill up the fuel, 20 laps, park condition's fine, not going to recharge. Fast pit stop, it's a six second pit stop, so I need, well, I need to pit in Verline as well, but let's go backup mode 
and low fuel, just trying to keep them a little bit of a gap so we don't double stack them too much. So the gap's 3.8. Uh, oh, yeah, let's pit in. Sorry, I didn't even say to pit in. Uh, fill up, park conditions fine, recharge, no. Fast pit stop, right. Uh, there's, there's, this is not going to be a, a swift double stack, unfortunately. There we go. Verlan had to lose a few seconds there, but hopefully he's not lost enough time, uh, too much time to still be in P3. Yes, he is. He's still in P3. That's all fine. Let's go pushing and high and pushing and high on the exit. Right, we're 0 0.3 behind Hamilton. The, uh, the, 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 the fight for P1 is on here. The fight for P1 is very much on. He's closing up. Let's see how this goes. Cat and mouse game, I think this is. Let's go on medium and also keep with the fuel there. Because I need to make sure we stretch these. Because I need to go till lap, uh, let's say, uh, 17 laps we need to go. So that's about lap 20, uh, 30, 33, 32. So we need to make sure we can stretch these. Right, we're closing up on Hamilton, though, with pushing. Looking good. Going to go neutral now. Going to continue to push Verline. But we're just keeping them honest here at 0 0.5. I, th I feel like this will very much will be a, a long game play. If I need to make sure, literally right at the end of the race, I've got enough tire wear and fuel to push and overtake him. Because if I overtake him now, he can just slipstream me, get some ERS going, and he will probably be able to come back at me, unfortunately. Right, sit rep on lap 30. 19 laps to go. We're five seconds one Hamilton because despite being on neutral, neutral the entire time, he's been playing around with pushing and then going back up mode. And even when he goes back up mode, he's not losing too much time, which is unfortunate. So I think now we have to change the game a little bit. We're going to go early on the attack and try and undercut with Verstappen. I've got to go early and try this out. We've got more, the, the fuel tank's bigger than laps left. So let's just push flat out now. And see how much time we can gain here. Five point. See, no, we're not even gaining. 5.7. He's on high and low fuel mode. And we're not gaining time. Very, very odd. Very peculiar. Right, got to pit in now with uh, Verstappen. Hamilton's already pit. So he's made an undercut strategy. Even though I wanted to make the undercut strategy as well. Right, going to fuel up 20 laps. Five laps of extra fuel. So we can push flat out. Do I risk the recharge? No. I'm not going to risk a recharge. We're going to come in just normally. With Verline, though, because he's third place, he's got a gap for third. He's not going to be attacked. Let's risk the recharge. Let's charge up. Let's let's, char ugh, let's charge up 50%. I'll go fast. And on the in-lap here, I'll use a little bit of charge here and get down to about maybe 30%, maybe. Something like that. Yeah, okay. Now let's save it. Let's go auto. And he's going to come in. Right, the, the Stappen's in. The double stack this time won't hinder Verline. And we're out. And there's a mistake on the recharge. You know what? I think this system's broken. I think this game's actually broken for this. If you use battery, it gets broken, basically. But like I said, he's got the gap to hour. Don't need to worry about it. He can get to the end of the Grand Prix. Right, Verline, the, uh, the Stappen, though. Pushing flat out now. 4.5 the gap. Right, I'm going to save, actually, a little bit of fuel with just high mode. And we're going to push like this. And we'll save up some... Some overtake mode for later on in the stint. But let's see. I will be severely pissed off if somehow we don't start to close this gap. Because again, that will be magically li like last episode. Hamilton's plucking pace out of thin air here. Despite us having a good car. You know, it's still not a bad car compared to Mercedes. And he's just pulling out thin air pace. It's just going to be like last season all over again. Where Hamilton's just too OP for some reason. Lap 39, gap 6.5, Hamilton's doing it, he's doing that thing where he just gets time out of nowhere, and I'm getting very annoyed by it, I, I hated it all last season, it really didn't, it really just, it just vexed me every time it happened, and it's happening again, look, he's on conserve, and he's getting away, this is really frustrating, really annoying, really annoying. We've got uh, eight laps left. We've got some fuel to play around with. We've got ERS to play around with. But he's just pulling away. And I can't afford to push every lap because then I'll wear out the tyres. All right. Lap uh, number 45. Four laps to go. And unfortunately, you can see the gap is 9.9. .9. This is actually ridiculous. You're seeing it in person, guys. I'm not just making it up. He's just... He's too OP. He's, he's on backup mode. And he's gaining time on us. This isn't it. This isn't it in any stretch of imagination. This is ridiculous. 6.6 .6 the gap. It's the last lap of the Grand Prix. And unfortunately, he will come through and win this Grand Prix. Yep, Hamilton's going to cross the line. 
and he's going to win the Italian Grand Prix. Verstappen comes second. Verline will come in third place. So it's a good 2-3, though. Constructors-wise, that's a good, strong finish. But Drivers' Championship-wise, Hamilton gets seven points on Verstappen. Gets uh, even more on Verline there. Ten points on Verline. Uh, I really hope this is not the start of this man coming back again to haunt us like last season with the OP nature of his AI once he gets in first place. But there you go. Frustrating, frustrating Italian Grand Prix, that is. At least we got the fast lap of the Grand Prix. So Verstappen gets two more points, actually. So at least that's pretty good. He's done well for himself there. He's reduced the, the deficit by five points in terms of the damage he does, or Hamilton does to Verstappen there. So that's pretty good. So two, three. Championship-wise, Verline's still in the lead, but now he's... Oh, oh my God. Hamilton's eight points off Verline. Uh, even despite da uh, doing damage limitation there, Verstappen is down to P3 now behind Hamilton. 11 points off Verline. This isn't good. Hamilton's come out of nowhere to challenge us again for the driver's title. Constructors-wise, though, to be fair, the one we care about more in the manager career mode, we're ahead by 60 points. So we're doing a very good job of maintaining that dominance because we're being so consistent with both our, our drivers right up there. But now it's game on driver's title-wise. But Constructors, we should still be good as long as our isn't performing, which he didn't there. He came P4. So, you know, we're doing well there in that kind of department, I guess. Uh, but still, frustrating to see that OP nature is coming back to haunt us. But that's just how it is. We knew it was there last season. This season is just kind of lucky almost in a way. Mercedes was so poor at the start of the season that Hamilton couldn't have that this year, uh, at least at the start. Now, tail end of the season, last third of the, of the season where it matters, crunch time. I guess Hamilton's coming back for a big championship momentum swing and title bout. We'll have to see how it goes then. Next episode, Singapore gonna have to come back i need to break hamilton momentum there and win that race but guys if you did enjoy this one hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you aren't around here to subscribe for weekly fall on content i've been around for a hundred today i'll see you guys next time goodbye